Welcome to the Smith and Rowland Show. Let's join our host, Alan Smith and Jeff Rowland. Welcome everybody to the Smith and Rowland Show. As usual, we have Mr. Rowland, Pastor Rowland, rolling in late. And as you can see, he, he hold does, on, everyone. My headset is connected to my chair. <laughs> yeah, it's because you. That's what you're used to listening to. That's right. Well, good morning. I'm sorry. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How about Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Fala la. We've got Merry Christmas. We have uh, Daddy Pete, otherwise yeah, known are. as Santa Claus or That's Alan me. Smith or we've Google got, Smith. Uh, Google, Google Smith. Smith. Yep, and we've got uh, we got the Grinch. Oh, Roland over Otherwise here. Otherwise known as Jason Barr. And we, I'm, you're just your friendly little elf over here. No, you're, you're, you're the Grinch, <laughs> Roland. I'm the Grinch? Yeah. I have Jason a Grinch. Scrooge. Jason is Grinch. Jason Scrooge. Yeah. Scrooge, Scrooge Grinch. Scrooge Grinch. Okay. Yeah. Well, Hashtag, you know. little daddy Pete over here. I'm the little angel <clears throat> that's on top of the Christmas tree. Let me just, let me just put, put in things there. in perspective. I still have not watched the movie Grinch. I had Ain't that, wasn't that in the movie y'all I said? Never seen. No. No. What movie did y'all say? Oh, Wonderful, Wonderful Life. Life. No, yeah. I haven't seen that neither. <laughs> how do you get do I you don't get, know. Grinch, Wonderful, Wonderful Life. Life. Same, same. <laughs> yeah. Same, same. Are you guys ready? Well, <laughs> well we're, we're, all, we're all birthed up here. Yeah. Christmas up. Yep. Yeah. We're Christmas up. <laughs> Actually, we are. I don't know. Are we supposed to announce, say this when we're doing this? We're doing this mm-hmm. the day before. Yes, we are. Christmas Eve. We are. Christmas Eve. Yeah, I couldn't Because get you Jason guys together. couldn't be here for Christmas Eve. He's in such great demand that he has to go <laughs> to the fall of life. I mean, what are you going to do? Christmas caroling and stuff? Is that. Well, they, no. they've asked me to, me and Trevor. Oh, please, please. I yeah. beg you, please don't do it. Don't. Uh, well, well, me and Trevor's going to go out and yep. we're going to follow law. We're going to yep. do Christmas carols from tree to tree. Alan, see if we can scare a squirrel up. Listen, the world is dark enough. <laughs> we do not need caroling from you and TC. Listen, I, for, I mm. forget two million, three million <clears throat> hits we had when I sang. Uh, yeah, uh, I know people was beating y'all to death. <laughs> Why could we not take a hint by that? And uh, uh, I just thought it was. Then I had all these producers calling me. All these producers. Karen uh, doesn't call Karen. Nashville. Karen has Hollywood. never called him a single time that I know of. Uh, all these producers. It <laughs> yeah. does get frustrating. Producers. Yeah. Okay, Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. this is what the kind of thing I have to put up with on a regular <laughs> basis, and I've. Just about had my feel of it. Well, I think everybody mm-hmm. feels sorry for you enough, Mr. Rowland. What, what article, article you got, you got pulled up? It's what, an what article. Doing? It's called, it's on the stream, He Came For a Mall. Yeah, yeah. He must be a Southerner. <laughs> he must. He, he must came be. for M E M all. M all. And he's from Alexander County. He must be. That's Al who? What's his name? Al Parada Ruda. Al yeah, Parada. Al Parada. Al Parada. I could have just stuck with Al. <laughs> yeah, Al. <laughs> That's Al. I love the first line. The story of Jesus' birth is not brimming with the elite. Now, right well, there. Now. I don't think it ever has. Well, I'm not sure what that statement means. What's brimming? Um, overflowing, or almost overflowing. Almost yeah. overflowing. Yeah, like, you know, just on the brim. Well, I mean, Roland's elite, and he kind of likes Christmas. He doesn't yeah. have a Christmas tree. Well, but, you know, one look at me, and everybody knows that I'm part of the elite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't believe it. I don't know. I think one, we chose the wrong day. Today one, is look. the day that I normally get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow. So and we're going, we to, we're going to get the Saturday rolling. This is not, not a good Sunday version. Rolling. This is not a good. This you know that a, thing on be the best version of yeah, yourself? This is not it. Never happens to me on Saturday. Yeah, because you're getting. So we usually do it on Sabbath Sunday off. evenings. I take the Sabbath we off. We usually do it on Sunday evening yeah. so that we get the best of rolling. It's right after he preached. Yeah. He's prayed up a little better. <laughs> he sort of, we get the best version. Uh, you know, and I know some of you is disappointed, but that's as good as it gets on a Sunday evening. Can I just say, with friends like you and Jason, <laughs> I definitely don't need another one. <laughs> well, that's a, well, I mean, with friends like me way. and Jay, who would need another one? Uh, that's for sure. Why you say, I, Jay? I, I agree. I, I agree with you. Jay, I yeah. don't even hear an amen. I, I, don't know, I don't know why you'd be looking. That's right. Now, Ooh. yeah, look at that. Now, that was a very good point. 
I'd we agree. can dissect I, I that totally point. I totally agree. With friends like y'all, I don't look for another one. <laughs> I don't want another. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I don't need another. One. I just want to. I just want the audience to know. Yes, Jeff Rowland is my friend. <laughs> That's, That's not, right. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't sneak in. <laughs> oh, he did on the Smith I mean, and Rowland show when on the Unplugged podcast. I've already done that. See, yeah. I announced. I made that announcement. What day was it? Thursday, Wednesday. I'm Tuesday. not backing up your lies now. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm documented. Not. It's proof. <laughs> it's not, on record. I'm not going back up your. Snitty. All you have to do is go back, ladies and gentlemen, to the unplugs. Listen, listen to them all. You'll hear you me say, "Jason is my friend." For what you say online these days. Because Nobody's going to go listen to another that, Jeff. podcast. I'm not on, the, I'm not on there. I'm not on there. Nobody's going to go listen to it. Let me tell you. Don't get me started on what you just said. <laughs> this, oh, this show oh, will yeah. come off this the rails. Is, this is Saturday, isn't it? I ain't kidding. The second sentence of this wonderful article. Hmm? Oh, one, we're back on the article. Yeah, boy, <laughs> yeah quickly. <laughs> quickly, Jason. Yeah, there we go. He's scared. Here we go. He's over our sweating bullets. Read, read the second line there, Jay. The second line? The second line. Here. One bloody, thirsty, tyrant king and royal advisors from a foreign land are about it. That's all that's, yeah, that was there. there. Yeah. The story is populated with regular folk, the carpenter and his young betrothed, the girl's cousin and husband, yep. the Christ child's cousin in his mother's womb, there shepherds in the field, a faithful widow, an old man of God who's... That's me. I knew you were going to say yeah. that. You, <laughs> was, you did not. Knew, you were about... Uh, I, knew, I, knew, I did not. I was no, during that. your teenage years. Those who house the expected couple, those travelers also in Bethlehem for the census. Jesus came for them all. I like that. Yeah. Pretty good. Jesus came for them all. You can get saved and born again, but you better not stump your toe after that. I'll see, that see, right okay. Now. All right. I'll do it right, right there. Now. You better you're, not. You're, you better not. Uh, you're dancing on. Because he came. Now. It says right there. It came for them all. If you really and truly take notice, Jeff and Jason, there, there's Jesus and being born, birth, carried by Mary. And we got Joseph on the scene. When Mary became impregnated by the holy ghost you got to remember then her belly went to getting big well she was betrothed about joseph she wasn't married yet yeah so you know everybody in town she had to be living under a level of shame or something because i don't know how she feels yeah, you know how she feels. Every time I'm out in public with Jeff. Oh, is that what that is? Which is never. I, never I, I, well, I actually thought he was talking about his big belly. But, I, but yeah, anyway. I, <laughs> I, mean, I just don't go out in public with you guys. <laughs> That's right. That's but why really, we're in a I dark mean, room. But there's Mary, and mm-hmm. there she has. She was with child. It appears Joseph went ahead and married her before, you know, they went to get to the census, you know, to Bethlehem. So anyway, I'm just saying Joseph and Mary were actually in a kind of a predicament with her being betrothed to Joseph, but not yet married, but found herself pregnant. So, you know, everybody thought, well, Joseph. So my point is there was a bit of shame around that event. Mm -hmm. And but yet God took a chance on that shame. It's something about he was birthed. To me, it was like he was birthed in that moment of shame. Not that she was in shame, but people around her would looked upon her as in shame. Because we know what the scriptures say, but they weren't there then. <laughs> yeah. Those scriptures weren't there yeah. to say that uh, an angel. Well, matter of fact, they were in such a predicament that even an angel had to come to Joseph in a dream. It's just so he would sign up. And I, well, I'm not saying he didn't sign up, but anyway... For him to know it was of God. Everything surrounding the birth of Christ was um, accentuated by he was born in the wrong place. That's right. He was born to the wrong people. Uh, That's for sure. He was born under the wrong circumstances. Mm -hmm. And then once he was born, they tried to kill him. You know, but yet God chose all of that. God chose. He knew every bit of that. But it, does it speak to a larger thing of how we respond to God moving on the earth? Well, I think mm-hmm. it's comparable to the time that we're born again. In other words, Jesus' birth to me is a reflection of our spiritual birth in that when we received Christ and started carrying Christ, it is out of our shame. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm yep. not saying that Mary had sin because she didn't. I'm just saying it was a shameful event to those that were in the little Nazareth there. Mm -hmm. Had to be because Mary and Joseph, all indications are they grew up together in that same little town. Yeah. 
and no doubt the marriages of that day, uh, guys, were, in other words, your father and mothers came together, and it was an arranged-type marriage. Yeah. And you know that they played together as kids, grew up together, and uh, in that situation, everybody in town knew what I'm saying, little yeah. Nazareth there. And so, but our born-again experience, is a, I think it has a lot of things that we need to look at there, because that situation, as you pointed out, is not the way, as humans, we would have wrote that event. No, you can't. I mean, <laughs> we wouldn't um, have done that. So there's a lot of meaning there, I think. Well, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Well, that's that what was they the question. Say. That was the question. So, I mean, everything surrounding the birth of Christ and even the life of Christ mm-hmm. was characterized <clears throat> by some type of either shame or violence or mm-hmm. something to that degree. And it does make me wonder if, in fact, I mean, you mentioned the parallel between the birth of Christ, our new new birth mm-hmm. experience. When we are born again, there is spiritually a target put on your That's back right. to some That's degree, right. and you're under an attack. There's no doubt. When he came to the earth, you know, the religious crowd, mm-hmm. for sure, was after him. Oh, yeah. The political crowd was for sure after him. Mm-hmm. The world system was after him. He had very few followers that that were truly following him to be the Prince of Glory. He yeah. preached to multitudes. Yeah. He pastored 12. That's right. And they, they forsook and fled him. It does call into light how people respond to a move of God. If you're going to have some kind of move of God, God's, it's going to come yeah. under... under. God is not orthodox. Through. No. I mean, come on. He does not. He does not write his script based does, off of what he does. Uh, he does you know, not. We're used to. It's like God uses the very things that a religious spirit would not use. Yeah. In which for him to to speak, and you know, as Christ, the birth of Christ. I think there's a. Of course, we celebrate. You know, at Easter we celebrate the time of of the death and burial resurrection of Christ, and it's like at the birth of Christ and the resurrection of Christ are these two great events, you know, that we celebrate, if you will, Mm -hmm. in Christianity. But the birth of Christ, I think, is a well that's not been explored too much. Yeah. I think there's a lot more into this time and this Christmas season because the, well, it's it's there at at the resurrection also, but to me, it's obvious that we can experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. At Christmas time, we worship the newborn king at uh, that time of his birth. You can feel the presence of Christ, the presence yeah. of God, the Holy Spirit of God. I just think there's a lot more to be discovered about the birth of Christ. And to acknowledge the power of God in the birth of Christ, mm-hmm. to acknowledge how God displays his power. Mm-hmm often in packages that we don't understand or that we can't hardly conceive of. Well, it's usually in packages. I mean, there's Jesus, as you said, there was born in Bethlehem in a stable. Right. Okay. Uh, God, God chooses to take the message of grace to the world. He looks down in Jerusalem. He picks the chief of sinners, yeah. the worst of the lot yeah. in Jerusalem. His name was Saul. Struck him down the road to Damascus. So, right. you know, God tends to use these so i mean the religious system would not go with what god chooses never never it's, he's, he's going no. to fight a war you got a thousand he, he said no nah, send a bunch of them home well even in the mind he, he, he's always going to make the odds yeah to where the, in the natural mind it won't work it won't work it's not logical and it certainly isn't in agreement with uh how nice we like to put things. <laughs> it's just these, you know, you can watch something on, on the, I, I've noticed this. God tends to not be uh, spiritual all the if, time. If, I don't. If you watch something like on television that's a, a, a scene in the summer down south. Right. And it's all these beautiful trees and, and, and all these things going on. But what they leave out is the mosquitoes, the bugs. That's right. You know, all of the things you can't see. That's you don't right. experience that in the film. Sometimes it's the same way in reading the Word of God. Jesus yeah. was born in a cow stable. That's right. You've got the smell, the yeah. odor, the stench, the filth, the dirt, all of the things that's associated with that that we overlook. This is where the Prince of Glory was born. Yeah. And we've talked about how that God does things in unusual packages yeah. Yeah. before. A song that I wrote a long time ago about worshiping God and the power of worship and how it answers questions that we can't answer yeah. was inspired by a guy who the Lord used, and I witnessed it with my own eyes him laying hands on the sick and they were healed. Mm-hmm. I witnessed it. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm 
I heard stories about mm-hmm. this guy. I knew him. I saw him do it. Mm-hmm. But yet he his body was so crippled, he had to walk with little walkers, and his hands were snarled right. up. And you think of, why would God choose such a package and to pray see. for healing? And that's something. But that's what he did. That's normally, if you read the Word, yeah. that's how God works. That looks like the God of the Bible that I read all the time. And in The Chosen, which I haven't watched <clears> that much of it, but I had, did see first one of the, the first two or three but where, and I forget which disciple it was that asked Jesus why he didn't heal him. Was that? Oh, uh, was it Bartholomew? I think. I'm it not was, sure. I'm not sure who it yeah. was. Which but do you remember the scene? Yeah, I do. Yeah. He said that, no, he said, no, I, you'll bring me glory. That's right. And yet he would pray for, I and, think he was praying for the sick and stuff. And you know, it. speaking of that show, a comment was made to me about, they was they were saying, the disciples, I, I just pictured them much older than they were. <laughs> right. Because right? you, know, so, you read the Word and you, you get this idea yeah. in your mind, but the reality was in a lot of ways so much different, and so it was with the birth of Christ. Well, that'd be about Jay, Jason's age, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah I mean, how could God me. get anything done with Jason's age? I'm, think about it. Would you, well, how old was Miracles. Jesus when he died? 33? Well, yeah. Alan was there, he said, at Bethlehem, so that'd make him like 2,000. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, you got to reach a certain age. Well, that's right. Just in spirit. You know, you got to learn how yep. to move around. But let's talk about this. Herod tried to kill yep. all the babies mm-hmm. two years old and under. Mm-hmm. What does it say to us about the threat of destruction from Satan against those who are born again? If those par- if we're making those parallels of the birth of Christ and our new birth experience, what does it speak to us? Does that well, say anything applicable to us? Today? Yeah. Well, to start with, I can't imagine Herod being intimidated by a baby in a manger, born in a cow barn. May we? Born, yeah. He was in, and of course, then he met the wise men before they went there, which is surely days after. But he met him and was kind of sending them on a secret mission so to speak yeah. he commissioned the wise men to go and said now come back tell me where he's at so i can go worship him he said, yeah right that was a lie yeah. out of the pit but mm-hmm. and, and of course then they i think they had a dream or something and the lord told him not to go back mm-hmm. to herod or something yeah but just think about being intimidated by a baby in a manger yeah so herod was intimidated because there had been such a message of that the king of the jews the leader was being born now, the only thing I can tell you is this. <clears throat> Herod wasn't converted to my knowledge, but he had enough sense that the birth of Christ still scared the bejeebies out of him. Yeah. Then he had all these babies killed, trying to kill the Messiah. But can you imagine at least Herod had enough respect for Christ that he feared him? Mm-hmm. Today, Jeff, people do not even fear. No, they have no reverence of God. No fear of God, of Jesus, have no fear whatsoever. Something that strikes me a little bit about is the humility that you see surrounding the birth of Christ Mm -hmm. that we've talked about, where he was born, those that were there, different things. The humility of that, I believe in some ways, plays into the intimidation factor of those that wants to destroy things from God. Mm -hmm. The more humble the trappings and the surroundings, the more of a target you almost are. At least that that was the the case with with Christ and his birth. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there is a parallel there that we could draw. Mm -hmm. Jesus even preached the humble, you know, the meek shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lessons on humility all through the the New Testament are told by Paul and about every writer mm-hmm, of, mm-hmm. Of, of the New Testament. Jesus spoke of it in the Gospels. This thing of humility can often be viewed in a natural perspective as weakness mm-hmm. when, in fact, it's great spiritual strength. Well, what do you think about, and I'll say this to you and to Jason, you know, we, we have had times that Christians would not go to war because of that very fact, of saying they're not going to take up arms or, or whatever because we're supposed to be meek, humble. That's what a Christian is. Do you think there's a place for Christians that are not in this lifestyle of humility, sackcloth and ashes? Could you have a Christian Navy SEAL? Yes, I think you can. Let me uh, ask. Let me put matter it Matter of fact, way. I think they would make the best Navy SEAL. No. I really do. I mean, I'm saying that I was in the military with some people that were 
against – it just struck me as odd that they were in the military. Why why, why join the military <laughs> if that's your stand? The argument to me that was presented to me was they just – they don't – they're not going to murder. And they – Judge that based off of thou shalt not kill, which thou shalt not kill literally means thou shalt not murder. Mm -hmm. In wartime, it is not murder to take the life of an enemy. If you go back to even the founding of the country, Revolutionary War, some of the greatest prayers that you'll hear was prayers prayed from General Washington Mm -hmm. asking God to lead him Mm -hmm. and guide him into victory, which meant the death of a whole lot of people. Over and over again, we find that true. David was a man of war, yet he was a man after God's own heart. So I do believe that the aspect of humility before God can make you a very strong-willed, strong-charactered individual that God can use during time of even violence. The Scripture talks about how that those that are violent take the kingdom violently or mm-hmm. by force. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's a concept that it's leaving the church for the well, most part. The reason I ask Eric, a little bit is in leaders in our country or our countries, a lot of times a very good leader is someone who is pretty out there and in your face, but you know God's leading them. Of course, that's a lot of people's opposition against Donald Trump. They think, say, well, he's not godly enough, and he's not this, that, and the other. But yet, uh, what you and I s- stick to and is to look at his policies. What is he pushing? What is he carrying? But I'd like to also even, let's think about just like World War II, Jeff. You got Winston Churchill. There's no doubt that they were right at the crossroads. Yep. I mean, just at the brink of destruction. Yep. And we know that England plays a, a huge, or is the game, of spreading Christianity to around the world. Absolutely. It affects a lot of the great preachers that affected America. Oh, absolutely. Uh, from England. Positive. And, uh, but there God pulled in Winston Churchill, and I say God pulled him in. There's just, you can't, there's no other way. The United States, he asked the United States for help, and I guess it was uh, It was before FDR. we were, FDR. Yeah, before, before we, we were pulled, pulled into in. it. And when uh, I think our <clears throat> our government, Congress, refused, we weren't going yep. to get involved. Yeah. And that's to our shame, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. <clears throat> and uh, But it just so happens God raised up a man, yep. which was Winston Churchill, and he was bad to drink. Yeah, his character. To sick. You yep. wouldn't have thought his yeah. outward character would have fit when God picked him. Right. But look at his heart. That that's the difference. Humility is a matter of the heart. We can look at actions and say, well, th- those he's not very humble. You don't know the humility of someone's heart before mm-hmm. God. Uh, mm-hmm. Sometimes the the acts, the outward actions that we would attribute to humility, mm-hmm. is not real humility. It's false pride. Mm-hmm. Winston Churchill. What struck me about Winston Churchill was the leaders of England hated him. Mm-hmm. For the most part, they really did. He was, the people loved him. And it's kind of the same situation when I hate to keep referring to Trump, but it's kind of the same situation. It is the same situation. Of uh, The elite and the leaders hate, hate him. Donald Trump. Uh-huh. They the hate people him. Don't, the people don't hate him. Those that have been led to hate him, hate him. Yeah. But those who think for themselves can distinguish between the messaging of the elite mm-hmm. and what is really real. Well, call him what you may. He's not part of the elite in the governmental structure, no. which some call it a cabal. And neither was that. Winston Churchill. And Winston Churchill definitely was. And, I, you know, uh, we watched a thing called The Darkest Hour. Yes. Uh-huh. And there was a there was a scene in that, in that film where the king came to Winston Churchill. And Winston Churchill told him, he said, the war cabinet's not going to follow me. Yeah, he was wanting to make a stand against Hitler. The War Cabinet was advising him to Not to uh, negotiate to negotiate for peace. And he had a famous quote he, there. Do you remember it? I can't remember well, the quote. Something I but can't either. nonetheless, the king come in and the king told him. He said, "You have my support." And he didn't think he he had didn't it. think he had the king's support. Yeah, and that's what turned the tide. And then the king said something to him about the people. Well, then Winston Churchill goes out. And talks to the he people. He did what the, what the king said. Yeah, he went and got... Uh, got, got in the subway. Yeah, he got in the subway and talked to the people, and he said, I want to hear from you. What do you think? What What do you think? And he was so inspired by, by the what common he man. thought. Common by, man. Yeah, by the people that he went back 
And he said, we're not surrendering. We're not negotiating That's for right. peace. We're going to fight till the last man is dead. That's right. That's what turned the war. Uh-huh. Now, something odd as well. But that kind kind of courage, though, Jeff, it always seemed like it was a divine courage. I think because oh, Because within himself, divine. he didn't really. It's like God sent him just at the right time. Yeah. The little bit of encouragement that he needed to have courage to carry out the right thing. And I can honestly say that in my life, I've seen you operate in it and Jason, that it's when you don't really look at yourself at having much courage. But if you're following God, it's like when you really need another bump. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Of courage. Yeah. It's like God will pour it in your veins or something. Consider this. I, you know, I, I'm going to say this, and, and uh, a lot of people will probably disagree or whatever. I'm going to even go this far to say that in literal form, Adolf Hitler at least was of the spirit of the Antichrist. Yes. If not prepared right. for that time to That's be right. the Antichrist. Yeah, he, he, didn't he was like at much. least operating That's in the right. spirit of the Antichrist. Listen, he didn't fight another country. He went to war with the world. Yeah, that's exactly right. And he wanted to dominate the world. With the world. And now, watch this. For such a time as that, a man like Winston Churchill was, was raised, raised up. up. So does that tell us anything? I think it speaks volumes. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a man of just brass courage Courage got to you. stand up in the face of that. That's right. And declare truth. Yeah. Even though sometimes the leadership's not going to like it. Uh-uh. They're not going they're not going to like it, but there will be a people that will die on that hill That's defending right. truth. That's right. And I do believe that there's there's all kinds of parallels. Watch, we may not have the support of the elite, but we do have the support of our king. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's where, that's where you can go with that one. I'm just saying. Just like Churchill had that's the support right. of the king. And, and I've been guilty of this, and I, I confess this, and I had to repent of it. Sometimes you can hear the noise of the voice of the leadership and attribute it to all the people. Mm-hmm. That's not accurate. Mm-hmm. The voice of the people, I think, are crying out. You know, I, we, I watched that, that film today, and I immediately wrote an article about it, about uh-huh, the message good. of the grace of God. Good. Matter of fact, I've wrote a couple of articles that I'm going to post next week, and it was based off of those ideas mm-hmm. of what is the battle lines. Surely, at the birth of Christ, there was battle lines. Oh, no doubt. And Satan, I believe this with all my heart. Since Genesis three fifteen, Satan started looking for that one that was going to crush his head. Mm-hmm. You know good and well that when Abraham was called out of the Ur of Chaldees, mm-hmm. Satan raised his head up and said, "I wonder if this is the one God was talking about," mm-hmm. and went after him. Moses, same way, all the way down through the Old Testament, David. This has surely got to be the guy that he was speaking right. of is going to crush yeah. my head. Then Jesus was born. Yeah. <laughs> and look, and don't forget, you know, we're talking about Mary, and, the, and it says in the book of Luke that, is, that she says is blessed, uh, she's blessed among women. But also, she was a common woman. Yeah, absolutely she was. She was yeah. a common woman. God doesn't use the elite of the world. No. He chooses he, the foolish things he, to confound the wise, see. which should give Jason great hope. He does. You know, what I, mean? I heard him. He, he said, "I heard him over there." It does. It gives us all great hope. But yet, she—I mean, Joseph and Mary were basically common people, middle, probably lower class. Yeah, and that's who God chooses to carry the message to the world. Yeah, and it's, and I think it's uh, still that way today. What I'd really like, Jeff, is like with Churchill. I don't know. I probably shouldn't like it as much as I do, but. He was lacking in so many, what some would say, moral ways. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not trying to advocate immorality, but I'm just saying on this far as smoking cigars and yeah, he'd drinking drink, drink brandy whatever and, brandy or whatever he was drinking pork, all the time. All kinds of yeah. Beer. He, he. Uh, I'm not advocating that, but I am saying that I think that we have more of a problem with that evidently than God does. Well, God used the man. As far as as using him, God used There's something man. about the man, and God. It says in the scriptures that God doesn't look on the outward appearance of man; He yeah, looks upon looks the heart. heart. So something about his heart Don't uh, you was think approved. That it had to have been um, somewhat of the resolve of his heart to do what I think was right. I think he had to resolve the truth, uh, Jeff, and yeah. to do. Do what was right. And, I, and I, I'm, I've got to throw this in here, but please don't let me get hung here. People and talk about, they've been talking about Mike Bickle and what he's done and all this sort of stuff. 
And yet somebody's got to explain to me why God used him to still make the greatest prayer movement known to man the last 2,000 years probably. Yeah, and it happened and five it brought, months ago, six months Five ago. six months ago. So there's something about God looked upon his heart. Yeah. But we can all say we've done all things we shouldn't, but I have to still be persuaded, Jeff, that his heart was right with God then. There's no doubt. You know what I'm saying? I, I have no doubt. And I'm, and, and it's, it's just, no and I'm not trying to take up for anything except for the obvious. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. I want to, everybody's wanting to point out what's not obvious or what's against it. I want to point out the obvious. Well, and, and the obvious, God chose to use him. God chose to use Winston Churchill. Yeah. I believe God chose to use Donald Trump. There's no election doubt or two that ago. God used there's him. No, there's no there's doubt. doubt. The reason the embassy is in Jerusalem today is because of Donald and Trump. And you can't tell me that. That's, was, a, that that's, was something that every president dating back to 48 said, said they were going to do, do. But never did He's it. the only one that did it. What a monumental statement that is. Well, to think that you're not going to come under the pit of hell trying to destroy you. Yeah. And, I mean, they're, they're trying to happen. say that, I mean, I'm not saying Donald Trump's perfect by no means. No. But he hasn't done enough wrong to produce what's come against him. Well, and the thing that I... you can hear what I'm saying. Yeah, and and I'm going to say this this part. When Donald Trump was running for president, he made a lot of statements that I never... I did not believe he would... I, I just did not believe he would do. He proved me wrong. Yeah. Not only did he do what he he said he did a lot more than what he said and so i you know i'm I'm saying that it takes sometimes that kind of a man well to lead in some dark times some reason god approves where we would not that's right like rfk jr i mean yeah that's right he's not he's he's in the same shape as trump (laughs) so nobody like him in washington listen He's got and more he enemies can, than Trump does. He's got more, at least a few Republicans likes Trump. Yeah, the, he, Robert F. Kennedy ain't, ain't got, got a friend nowhere. He ain't got her except me and you, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I kind of like a guy. I do, too. And he doesn't do nothing but spout off truth. I'm not saying I'm in 100% and, and agreement with it. him on everything because no, I'm neither. not with Trump or anybody else. But I got to give credit where credit is. He stood up to his own party. He stood up against what he believed was wrong in the other party. He stood up to his own family. He, he stood up to his own family. He stood up against the elitist complex right. of our of our wow. government system i mean and i mean just shut he down in all conversation. Yeah. yeah he just challenged all of them and to say that the man is not smart enough to articulate his argument apparently you uh, haven't listened to him so i mean i there is um, some unusual things that god does that we if you're looking at the with the natural eye you're not going to see it mm-hmm you're going to judge it as something not only that's not from God, you'll say that God's not in a thousand miles of it, mm-hmm. much like what the birth of Christ was about. You see, when Trump got voted off the ballot, so to speak, out in Colorado, Colorado you know the first one to come to his defense? Robert F. Kennedy. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Absolutely. He was the first one to stand up They said it was a travesty. Yeah. So, I, there is, so he's standing for truth was my what Well, I can I tell you? A parallel to that was Winston Churchill. He was not. He was hated by his own party. They was trying to railroad him out. The other party didn't agree with his policies. What happened was he was inspired by the people. He was mandated by the king. Yeah. And he then, in turn, inspired the people with his message. Thus is the calling of every Christian. Yes, it absolutely Thus is. is the calling. With this great message of the gospel, That's of right. the grace of God that has been given to us. That's right. And uh, I'm hoping that next week when we get into our unplugs, we can take a look at these two articles I've written. Yeah. Because I do believe that they are paramount to the times we're living in. Yeah. And yeah. they need to be, at least I'd like to I agree. hear them voice. Because it's, um, I, I got to tell you, when you begin to go back in the time of Christ, around the birth of Christ, uh-huh. when you begin to give up God's revelation for what seems to be right in your natural eyes, yeah. you'll crucify everything God does. You'll end up crucifying yeah. everything God yeah. does. Thinking you're taking up for it. Thinking you're defending God. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly Can right. I tell you the big mistake, and the only reason I can say this <laughs> is because I have personally been convicted by the Holy Ghost for this. When you make that bad mistake, it's when you're having this mind, I'm going to defend God, mm-hmm. and I'm going to defend his word. I hear and, you. And, and, I, and you know, I'm serious. Yeah. Well, well, I, well I bless you. God, I'm going to defend the church. I'm going to defend yeah. God. And yeah. Bless God, yeah. I'm the one to defend it. And, and I get all that. The only thing that I can tell you is 
that I got convicted of the Holy Ghost, and God said to me, who are you to defend me? Yeah. Point being, yes. God doesn't need to defend it. Right. And the point was, he needed me to live for him. That's it. And ju- and just enjoy the benefits of his That's kingdom. That's right. That's right. And walk in the benefits and the authority mm-hmm. of his kingdom. I'll mm-hmm. say this. When we give up pieces of our faith like that, mm-hmm. you never get them back. This is gone. Uh, I remember this. I don't want us to get off track here either, but there's an old movie called Sheffy that I think we posted at one time on the kingdom side. And I had a couple of dear friends there in heaven now that played in that film. And Bob Jones University made the, the film, and it was about the life of a camp meeting, circuit riding preacher back at the turn of the 1900s named Robert Sheffy. Mm-hmm. He, he instituted camp meetings in our area here mm-hmm. across these mountains. Yes. And uh, at the end of his life, the camp meetings was being replaced by the religious world, yeah. the religious system. In other words, come in and, and called him an itinerant preacher that he had no business doing what he was doing. Mm-hmm. At the end of his life, he said this. He said, the camp meetings probably will go by the wayside. But he said, I tell you, when we give up pieces of our faith, mm-hmm. you never get them back. Wow. And I think there's there's a lot there's of truth, truth to, that, to that, especially in light of I heard R.C. Sproul do an amazing job the other day preaching on worship. It was, this was back some time ago, and he was talking about respect for the uh, old hymns mm-hmm. and, and some of that stuff. Here's what he said. He, he made this statement. He said, everybody needs to understand the church was not built for teenagers. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. He said they're a part of the company, Mm -hmm. but it's not built just for teenagers. He said when you're worshiping and you gather to worship, he showed up at a church to preach one time. There was 35 people there. And he got up and he said, he said, I want to tell you, he said, if I seem a little nervous today, he said, I, when I stand the multitude of such a large audience, he said, I often get nervous and everybody laughed. And he said, no, I'm not kidding. He said, we need to understand that when we gather for worship, the host of angels mm. are present. There is an mm. innumerable company of saints mm-hmm. that are present. Mm-hmm. And he used the book of Hebrews to back up mm-hmm. what he was talking mm-hmm. about. And he, he then went on to describe how that worship should be focused on Christ, Christ alone, mm-hmm. and be expressive so that the entire company that is there mm-hmm is involved in the worship of God. I don't know how I got off on that, but I I, want to point out that most of the time when we look at things through our natural eyes, Mm -hmm. we see things in a, at the very least, in a dull, fuzzy way, Mm -hmm. through a glass darkly, so to speak. If we're going to really tap into what God's doing on the earth, we got to do it with God's eyes. Mm -hmm. we got to do it with his (laughs) eyes. we got to see the way he does. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think that's much played out in the birth of Christ. There's absolutely no. Evidently, the shepherds, uh, the wise men, apparently others were seeing something that the natural eye wasn't seeing. Yeah, that's right. You know, I find, I'm sitting here reading about the Magi, the three Mm -hmm. Magi. That is fascinating. It is. I mean, that is, it is some that's some bizarre stuff yeah, yeah I mean, it, it is. really is i know what it is but, what, are you, what have you got there but one of the things that really caught my let me find it here i highlighted it um one of the things that really caught my eye was the gifts that they brought you know they were there's really no proof that they were kings there's no i mean we don't really know a ton about i mean there's some traditions and some 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 of that stuff but the three gifts that they brought was is really odd um they brought it like the spiritual meaning of the gifts was is pretty interesting. Gold is a symbol of kingship on earth. That's right. Frankincense is in, an incense is a symbol of a deity. Right. Yeah. And myrrh is an embalming oil as a symbol of death. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's it's very right. odd that they would bring mm-hmm. those three things. Odd that they would come at all. They were obviously pretty interesting people. It seems one of the more prevailing traditions is that they were all three martyred for their faith that mm-hmm. they converted to christianity mm-hmm. wow. um later wow, wow. Um, after uh, jesus grew up and that's um, after they after they they were very impacted mm-hmm. by, but they were <laughs> later kidding. martyred very odd just it's interesting to me though you know with jews they would have brought cattle and sheep mm-hmm. as an mm-hmm. as an offering but these people, it was it's almost, uh, and this might be far fetched. It was almost like the first Gentiles yeah. to recognize mm-hmm. Jesus as. I, as I can see, I can relate to that. Yeah, and it's kind of like from one, yeah. king, one king to another. That's king. right. Yeah. yeah, 
That's uh, right. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I can imagine um, that if us three had been in that time, that we would have been on those three camels. I mean, just say it. Yeah, I mean, just well, say it. Not to get us off track. I don't track want to get here. off track neither, but I think everybody – probably knows i'd have been called yeah. a wise man in that day uh, <laughs> well i said all three of us yeah. oh well yeah uh, i'm yeah. not so sure about that but okay i'll, I'll go just ruin it. all right go ahead Jason. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> that to me they're the most interesting people out of the whole i totally group. agree and i think the, there's a whole a whole understanding there yeah. that's probably missed yeah, it's, there and, is and, there and, absolutely and they were probably rulers of some sort for sure mm-hmm. like yeah. for them to have those, ty- those that type titles of, yeah. yeah um they were definitely very wealthy people yeah well, what magi i don't know what that it kind of translates to king or okay. ruler in a mm-hmm. way but there's really no proof that they were a king yeah. but right. they were probably right. a ruler of some sort yeah of some but it's yeah. interesting to me the kings that came to recognize jesus was not it was the kings of the world. It wasn't the kings of the. It wasn't. The yeah, Israelites. they came from the east, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, they come from Asia. Also, the um, the mere bringing of those particular gifts does. Mm-hmm. I th- and I've preached this before. Yeah. Proves that they had some type of authority, and it was almost as if yeah. they were. I, I'm now. This may be a stretch, but it was almost as if they were. Uh, laying their authority down by the giving of those oh, gifts yeah. to I, the supreme authority that was there. You know, they come from like Babylon is really where mm-hmm. they come from. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that astrology, and there was a lot of stuff yep. going on in Babylon. Definitely not like what we would consider. Mm-hmm. Well, that, you know, they yeah. followed the but, star, you know, so, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Well, and, and they, some don't even have know even, what they, they don't even know what that was. Right. That's what my point uh, was. Some have even said that because they didn't know what the yeah. star was, that they were hedging their bets, yeah, so to speak. Uh, uh. You know, being very religious yeah, in nature, what, but they knew what they were looking for, right? And that's the strange. It's almost yeah. like they knew who Jesus was and who he was going to be, yeah. and what was mm-hmm. going to happen to him before they even came, yeah. And that's the that's the strangest the strangest thing to me. Yeah. And th- you know, there's a lot of information out there. There's I didn't realize how many people study those guys. But it, there's a lot of stuff out there on the on the Magi, but it was that's a very prophetic thing that happened. Yes, it there. is. Yeah. It's very very interesting to me. I don't know. It's inter- I think some of these childhood stories, and I really appreciate the fact that we still have those and we have people teaching them. That's right. But I think because of because we were taught them as kids, that they're overlooked and we just kind of breeze over them. We don't I really, agree. We're, I totally we're, agree. like it's like a nursery rhyme. You really I don't totally really know agree. what you're singing. I totally agree with that. No. But so much of the birth yeah. of Christ is yeah. just brushed over. We yeah. don't realize how that's right. How much important to the, and, that is and today. almost reserved for cr- the Christmas yeah. season yeah. instead yeah. of being a part mm-hmm. of our faith all year yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, I do believe that. Yeah. And so yep. I I just find that interesting. There's that's more than interesting. I think there's even more to it. There's probably a lot more to that. Yeah, there's uh-huh. a lot to that. But you know, it, I can just imagine, uh, not trying to regress, but us being the three wise yeah. men, they we'd probably been in the scriptures as Larry Moe and Curly. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, and I, mean, I would have yeah. been called Curly. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what the prophet Jeremiah said, and this this is what ends this article. I love the way the, the, this article ends. I don't know if y'all have read that. Okay, part, a teary world rejoices. A teary world rejoices. Mm-hmm. It says this Christmas finds us not merely in a weary world rejoicing, but a teary one. Wow. The wailing and weeping is fresh in our ears. A voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping. Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted. Because they are no more. And that's what we're seeing play out in Israel and that's Gaza right, now. That's right. But then the Lord says, Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy. So there is hope for, for your descendants, declares the Lord. Your children will return to their own land. Then the writer says this, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came for them all. 2,000 years later, hope remains. Hope remains. And it's happening right before our very eyes. Can I just say, <laughs> this is this, wild. what would make this the greatest Christmas ever, to meet the Lord in the middle of the air? What if that could be tomorrow? Just think of that. Hey, just watch this. Listen to this. Don't tempt me with a good time. Hey, for, <laughs> for all of the premillennial, <laughs> pre-tribulation rapture believers, yes. he could come tomorrow. He for could. the rest of you, y'all just hang out. Y'all have fun. We'll be back later. Y'all have fun. <laughs> <laughs>
You might want to come well, to my house. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, very good, Jason. Well, Jay, you want to take us out of here, Somebody buddy? pray for us. Go for it, Mr. Rowland. Lord, thank you for Christmas. Thank you for the heritage of this celebration. Amen. God, I pray that we will find ourselves this Christmas season participating in all of the activities that Christmas brings. Amen. The biblical activities, which is praise, being offered to you. Amen. Help us not to get caught up in nothing else but that, Lord. That's right. Uh, God, I pray that if we've said anything is wrong or if we, please forgive us. And thank you that forgiveness is still there, regardless That's of what right. anyone says. That's right. You established it. That's right. And it's a principle with which I can live my life on, knowing that my sins are gone. You took them. You took my sins and you gave me your righteousness. That's right. And I love you for that this Christmas. I want to follow you the rest of my days. And I pray, Lord Jesus, you'll give us the courage to march on as time allows and Lord if we can agree with you would even pray even so come quickly yes. Lord Jesus come quickly we long to see you we long to be with you but until that time comes Lord that you call us home may we be faithful to declare the gospel of the grace of God because you came for us all. That's right. And grace reaches everyone. So help us to be busy about that business. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. All right, and for our right, good guys. friend. Merry old, Christmas. Our, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And for our old good friend, Old at Heart on here, ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. ho. Old at Heart. Oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> old at Heart, but young in spirit. There amen. you go. All right, guys. See you. Thank you for joining today's Smith & Rowland Show. You can check out our website at kingdompropheticsociety.org and our daily unplugged podcast at smithandrollandshow.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.